Okay, you guys, a big moment. Let's take a look at the Kings. Frank, I'm super excited. I am too. Yeah, so here we are finally. Um, uh, it, it's been a long, a long time for some of these projects. You and I have been talking about it for a long time. So you guys, meet Frank if you haven't met Frank. Frank is here at Topshop Auto. You guys got a great location. You guys have been maintaining the 80 now as I go out there and I break the crap out of it for now, what, about 17 years? I, had, I, bought, it in 20, I, I bought it in 2010. Uh, went through the first motor. You guys rebuilt the, the, the right. motor that I, that I have in it, purrs like a kitten. Uh, and we've got a lot of projects that we're doing today. Right. What do you want to start with? Yeah, you sent me a text this morning um, right over here and it said, check engine lights on again. Right. So, and we've been we've been working with the check engine light on for a long time. Because, yeah. Because the wiring harness, when you were going out to Reno that one time, or you were, where it's, were you? You were in Nevada. Yeah. yeah. And you did a temporary repair to the wiring harness. Right. And it's still that way. Yeah, so we have to do, <laughs> we have to get rid of my temporary repair. Now the wiring harness, is a uh, vintage right, right it's an antique right. there's two new one issues the egr tube is real close to the wiring harness the when they get older the wiring harness creeps towards the egr tube and the EGR, egr tube takes it out yeah they also have they're also known for fragile plastic connectors so the connectors when um when they are going through the heat cycles of the engine for however many years how old is this truck 97. many yeah so it's an old truck the plastic gets brittle and yeah. now all the little connectors and the tabs that keep the injector plugs on the injectors no longer work. Right. So I think you've got some plugs that are floating on and off the injectors as you're driving. Right. Hence the check engine, the, the computer doesn't like that at all. <laughs> I can run on four cylinders. I've gone many miles on four cylinders. It's not fun. It's bad for your cat too. Yeah. So your cat yeah. converter can only take that for so long and then, yeah. and then it bellies up. Yeah. So. So we got, we, so we, those are the main maintenance issues. And then we got some uh, fun projects that are finally getting done that we've talked about for a long well, time. Well, you guys, Parnell and him decided they didn't need a parking brake. Right. But then we decided he probably does need a parking brake. Right. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> it, it came down to square footage in the truck. Right. There was no more square footage inside for the brake handle. So yeah. the, the answer to that is an electronic parking brake like you'd find on a modern car. So we're going to use an electric parking brake it's uh, a, to handle that. E-stop. It's an e-stop parking brake. I, I, you guys, single button. I, I, I try, I try, and I try and mention um, uh, who makes the parts because it's the most common question that you guys have. Right. Um, and well, so it's an e-stop. It's an e-stop, and then the the injector connectors are from Dorman. Okay. So Dorman injector connectors. Got it. They they sell them on a regular basis. You can find Great. them all over the place. Yep. Um, Really available. Huh. Toyota does not make them anymore. Sure. That's going to be awesome. And then the electric parking brake is much better for Corey. She has rheumatoid arthritis. So w everything we do in the truck, we uh, keep that in mind. We want it to be as easy as possible. Yeah. Also, I'm getting older for crying out loud. So um, try and make it as easy yeah. as possible. It's just a push button, right? So um, uh, be a lot easier. Well, there's her. a lot of times we don't realize this. I mean, it's not that we're just super strong, but like, so as mechanics, we use our arms and our legs a lot during yeah. the day. And we park customers' cars outside and we put on the parking brake. Yep. And when our customers come back in, I can't get the parking brake off. So right. we got to go out there right. and, and click it down a few yeah. more clicks so they can yep. leave. I've learned that for Corey, actually. <laughs> I can't go Rick on the thing because she's like, I've, great, thanks. I can't do yeah. this. So yeah. this alleviates all of that. Yeah, so yeah. that'll be, that'll yeah. be great. Um, and then uh, the piece de resistance, the, the, the yeah, this, this great... Part, we weren't expecting this part to come in until like 2024. Right. <laughs> but it came in. I, it was a nice surprise. So like, we, ordered, we ordered King shocks in January of 2021. And you guys know I've been talking about King suspension so, for, since 2010. Yeah. So it's really the right choice because of the amount of off-roading that your truck does. Yeah. It, it, it does more off-roading than any of my other customers do. Yeah. And, and no other shocks have been able to handle it. Right. So we're, we put we're a variety. Yeah, we put a variety of shocks on there, and you guys know. So a little plug for the Overland Bound community: go find out about becoming a member, so you can talk to our worldwide community about what gear they use. Right. And King Suspension, King Shocks, um, are kind of the, the. They have been for a long time, uh, the standard. They just happen to be really hard to get. We do get beat out by the trophy trucks and stuff. Uh, yeah. We're secondary. 
to yep. to their mainstay is racing. They really yes. make race equipment. So we're we're not racing. So, right. So we don't, you know. Right. So we had to wait, <laughs> ordered it in uh, January of uh, 2021, and finally got it here. here. And I'm really excited about that. I mean, it's going to make a world of difference, no, so that's going to be here. great. Okay, hey, Frank, uh, you and I are going to slide under the truck yep. and see if we can find a spot for that uh, e-stop emergency brake. Right, it's got to go, it's not going inside anymore, and it's, and it's about that big and about that wide. You'll see it when, we, yep. when we're in there. It's got to go somewhere, and it's got to be logistically in a place that can actually pull the cables for the rear brakes. Yep. So we'll kind of go over that system and we'll go over where, where we can put it. Great, let's so, do it. Okay. All right. Okay, Nas, break it down for the camera. Sorry, I'm interrupting you. That's no, all good. Uh, what did you what did you discover and what are you gonna do? So after we did all the uh, injector um, connections, yep, we chased back into the actual harness, uh -huh. and there was two bare wires that were touching each other on one of the injectors, so it was grounding it out. Got and, it. And uh, kind of throwing the computer into panic mode. So we had we had just about uh, well we had a, a a whole combination of things going on. We had the the the, the plugs, the injector plugs, mm -hmm. and. And then we have deeper issues with the wiring harness. Yeah, yeah. Basically everything. Yeah, because the plugs were just popping off. Like right. the actual clamp that hold, or the actual <laughs> clip that holds the plugs on. As soon as I, uh, you know, pull up on this harness right here, which runs down to the norm the injectors. Yeah. These clips weren't holding at all, and they were just kind of popping on and off. So that's Got the other it. thing is you're getting a short there too. So. All right. Yep. So e-stop. E-stop. Yeah. Of course, we don't have the e-stop there right now, but the first step to the e-stop is undoing the parking brake from inside, putting it down here, and it's going to make an S-turn around the differential. Back up here, and we're going to put the e-stop on this frame rail. Cool. And then all we got to do is run the wiring, and wires, as you know, we can run wires anywhere. But, yep. You know, so run wires inside to the switch. Frank, we're going to be done by lunch. No. Frank, what are you doing? How come you're on the ground? That's See it is? Yeah. What's that? Parking brake cable. Dude, it's not going to be convenient there. I'll, I'll literally have to get out of my truck in order to pull on the parking. I'm going to put a pedal here so that you yeah. push the pedal goes click, click, click. Oh, all right. You know? All right. That'll work. We're going to end up uh, cutting the housing but not cutting the inner cable so that we have some inner cable left. And then having it so that it can pull that inner cable and apply the parking brake from over there on the frame. Okay, once we figure it out, we'll let you guys know what we decide. Yeah. A big moment. Let's take a look at the Kings. Frank, explain to people how they work. For the unindoctrinated, imagine you've never had an off-road truck and you have to speak to the microphone. Okay. There, there you go. So the only purpose for shocks is to keep you from bouncing. That's how they work. Great. Okay. No bouncing. Uh, these are built to be abused. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You so, can, you, all day, every day, over the bumps. Yep. Folks that are listening may not understand the difference between oh sometimes I go down a dirt road and no right. I'm bombing down the Mojave right. Road constantly in my right. truck yeah four hours of Mojave Road yeah right is abuse it right it's abuse and and normal shocks will say see normal, you later. Shock, normal shocks will melt all the stanchion seals the stanchion is the big part on these yeah which is really big on these shocks we're like donut all over oh yeah
All right, you guys, so, uh, moment of truth. Nas, you've completely torn this thing apart. You ripped everything out from under the, the hood and put the wiring back in, right? Yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah. what did we find again, just real quick summary? Um, same thing, there was two injectors that had broken tabs on them, so they yep. were just popping on and off. Right. And then uh, on cylinder five and six, it was actually burnt through the wires. Yep. So they were grounding out to each other, and that was causing the, um, the motor to just kind of cut out on you. All right, let's see what it does. All right. No, seriously? It hasn't sound that clean forever. The belts aren't humming. It is freaking smooth as anything. That is <laughs> awesome. It sounds good. It sounds good. <laughs> sounds great. Hey, you know what, though, I can tell right away, although this is not a dirt road bombing down through Mojave or Death right. Valley, what I can feel right away is that they feel good. <laughs> nice. It's got pull. I think the wiring harness work helped. Helped. It feels different. Good. Not only has it got awesome, King shocks on it right now, but it feels like it has more pull. That is awesome. That's good. Well, because I was running on five cylinders. You know? Possibly. So it, it's, it's possible that one, five and a half. it's got one sixth more power. <laughs>